Hey, what's up? Welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, I want to talk about dehazing images. So this time we are going to use the base raw image and try to make it as clear as possible. If you want to follow along, as always, you can find the raw file in the description of the video. And now without much more talking, let's go. So here we are in the camera raw editor. And by the way, since most of the changes will be happening here, this means we can also do the same in Lightroom if you want to do that there. So looking at the base image, we can immediately see there is a lack of contrast going on with the darkest part being the tree here in the foreground. So in the distance, you might be able to spot some mountains, but due to that atmospheric case, it's not really possible to see them and it's kind of destroying this image. So let me fix that, but first I'm changing the profile to Adobe Standard. This will lessen the contrast some more, but this way I just have some more control over it myself. One thing that's bothering me quite a lot is the white balance. At the moment it looks like a golden hour shot, but I don't really like it for this image. So let's bring down the temperature. Just like that, neutralizing that golden color coming in. And now let's make this image clearer. Everything is super bright here. I'm changing that by bringing down the exposure and I'm dropping it quite a bit. By bringing down the exposure, you will notice clouds suddenly appearing in the sky. That's already quite good. But of course the whole image got a lot darker, which might be a problem later on. So to counter that, I'm going to bring back some whites. And I try to not lose too much detail in the sky. But that is looking pretty good this way. So let's compare to before real quick. You can see the clouds are now way more visible than before. That means we are working slowly towards a more clearer image. Then I do want to bring up the blacks since we do have a little bit of underexposure going on in this image. It's not that dramatic. I just want to count it in that way. So next up, we can actually make use of the dehaze slider to reduce the haze. But I'm actually going to use only a very small amount here because I don't like what the dehaze slider is doing to this image. At the same time, I want to bring down the clarity just to give the whole shot a little softer look. And then let's add some texture. But that is looking really good. And finally, let's bring up the vibrance just so we have some more color tones in here. All right, and that's it for those base adjustments. We can compare it to before real quick again. Um, besides the fixed colors, you can see the biggest difference probably in the sky as we have more details in here. And we can also spot those mountains in the back a little better. But let's further improve on that. For this reason, I'm using local adjustments. So for the sky, I'm using a linear gradient and just drag it down like that, covering most of the sky. And in here, I'm just going to further bring down the exposure first. So of course, this will make everything darker, the dark blue sky as well as the white clouds, which might be looking a bit strange. So I do want to change that by bringing in some contrast and thus the white clouds get a little bit brighter again, just like that. And at the same time, we do have a lot more detail in here. Then to further improve this effect, I'm going to work with some clarity. And this really helps to bring out the details in the clouds. Perfect. And with only that one linear gradient, we have pretty much made the whole image a lot clearer. Let's compare to before again, and you can see a huge difference. So at that point, we can focus on the rest of the image. Uh, I do want to apply a linear gradient for the very near foreground, since I have the feeling this area is a little chaotic due to all that grass. So with this linear gradient, I do want to bring down the clarity very slightly to just reduce the details in here. And then I do want to add a radial gradient just to kind of bring back some brightness to the sky. And I'm making it rather big. And I'm going to place it on the right side. Just like that, maybe. In here, let's push the whites. And this will add some more contrast to this image. 
and the contrast part is an additional help to counter the hazy atmosphere of this shot. So don't be afraid to push it quite a bit, just keep the overexposure in mind. Also I want to push the blacks for a little bit of subtle glow and maybe even drop the dehaze in this area, but only a very tiny amount. Alright, so this is looking really really good. At that point I want to head into the color mixer and specifically target the luminance of the green and blue tones. So let's bring up the green luminance, which will make the grass a little brighter and again just helps with the contrast and thus kind of dehazing the overall image. Then let's bring down the blue luminance for a darker sky and again just adding contrast. Perfect. Now let's switch over to the saturation tab and I do want to bring up the blue saturation just because I think it works well together with the green foreground. Perfect. And at this point we already have a pretty clear image. So I'm not going to touch the split toning since I quite like how the colors look. However, I do want to sharpen this image. So doing the basic things, bringing down the radius, increasing the detail, adding some masking and adding some sharpening. All right. I think we can enchant it somewhere using a bit of Photoshop, so let's open it up. Of course, the first thing for me is to get rid of a few sensor spots, so I'm grabbing the spot healing brush, zoom in, and then I'm just brushing over all those dots. Alright, that's looking good. Now, in the beginning I was thinking about removing the trees in the background, but I think it kind of looks okay for this shot, so I'm not going to erase them. Instead, let's add a bit of glow coming in from the right side with a new layer and I'm changing that blending mode of the new layer to soft light. Grab the brush tool and I want to pick a color from the cloud on the right. So I'm holding down the Alt key and click in here and let's bring down the brush opacity really, really low, maybe 8%. And then I'm just starting to paint in some glow. And I'm always trying to overlap something like the trees or the hills to add this subtle light bleed effect. All right, that's looking really good. At this point, let me merge those two layers. And finally, let me take a look at the Nick Collection plugin. And one filter that really will help clearing up this image will be the polarization effect. Let me turn up the strength a bit. And you can see this one just adds some more contrast to the sky. It also will make the colors a little stronger, so just be careful again. But this works really, really well on this shot, as you can see. So I want to go with this. And let's see, I'm going to try and add another filter. This time, however, I'm using the Pro Contrast effect. And I'm going to add a little bit of contrast here. Maybe some dynamic contrast. I think that's looking better. All right, so let's apply it like that. And here we have the finished picture. So I hope this video was helpful and interesting. As always, if you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.